Hello friends, once again, I am Tom, that is Jimmy. We're gonna take a look now at some potential trades that could go down. We got five players and five trade packages in mind here, and we'll focus on some of the bigger names, not the 12th man on a bad team's bench, because nobody cares about that. First up, the biggest one here, that is Chris Paul. The Thunder do want to trade him, but Jimmy, the market's really not there at the moment. Yeah, I, this is going to be super interesting to watch how it plays out if he gets stuck in Oklahoma City and just running with a bad team. I don't know what Chris Paul is going to do, especially since apparently Miami, Miami's actually not that interested in him for now. Well, I think the Heat definitely know that they have the leverage. Like, there aren't very many teams out there looking to add Chris Paul, and a large reason behind that is the contract. It's not good. Yeah, look, we, we mentioned it as one of the most overpaid contracts in the NBA on our recent video, and... I think that's reasonable. A guy that doesn't play a lot of defense anymore, he's not healthy on a regular basis. He's only played, what, 53, 56 games the last two seasons. Getting paid nearly $40 million every season is way too much. Way, way too much. So because of the contract, that definitely brings down the value for Chris Paul. Here's my trade package. Feel free to at me. The handle's up there if you don't like it. Thunder basically salary dump him. Drogic, Johnson, and Waiters. They also send back a first-round pick to Miami. They get to keep one of their ones. I also see a scenario, by the way, where the Heat are like, no, give us all of our first back. Because the Thunder have two of them. That is true. I, I think they could do that, but I just I just don't think Oklahoma City would budge with that. I think they're, they could do better without having to give up their picks. But they do have a lot stacked up. And it's not like the Chris Paul's a bad player. He's still a good distributor. The scoring has dropped down a little bit as well. But with his age and his contract, he's not on the rise. He's very much on the decline there. So with the, if that trade goes down, here's what the Thunder's lineup could look like. Again, it's a rebuilding lineup, but that's okay because you also free up more minutes for Shea Gillis Alexander. I think that should be the Thunder's key this, off, this summer is to – get Shea Gilgis as much run as they can because I think he is going to be in the running for most improved player, especially now that he is going to be the, the basically lone star in Oklahoma City, maybe Steven Adams, but I, I like Gilgis Alexander a lot. The Heat, meanwhile, definitely take a hit on their bench, but it's still a pretty good squad. I think so too. I, you know, a fun backcourt with Tyler Hero apparently growing pretty quickly and Bam Adebayo is your new starting center. I like Justice Winslow a lot, and obviously they added Jimmy Butler. I think things get interesting in Miami for sure. Reminder on that trade package for Miami, they are hard capped, so it makes it very difficult. They can't. They have to include at least three players, otherwise the money's just not going to work out in the end there. So that's a big factor why I sent out three players. All right, guys, make sure you are subscribed to us here on YouTube. Let's get that 130K mark. We know there are lots of you. We got almost 1,000 watching right now. We know there are a lot of you who don't who watch but aren't subscribed which is weird to me so if it's your first time watching or your third fourth fifth whatever and you're not subscribed yet hey but hit us up hit us up with a subscription there hit us with that big red button it's all you got to do the link's down there if you need it but just hit subscribe that's definitely easier there so thank you guys if you already are subscribed let's stick with the thunder here danilo gallinari who i think is an obvious and frankly fairly valuable trade tip chip for Oklahoma City. I agree. Gallinari had a really good year last year for the Los Angeles Clippers. It, it, he, they want him to be their starting power forward, apparently. That's why they were comfortable giving up Jeremy Grant. But it doesn't make a lot of sense because he's 30 years old they, and he's... They chipped off Grant to get the first round pick. Well, yeah, for sure. But they, they were comfortable in doing that because they had Gallo there, I think, as well. So, look, I think he's valuable. I think you can get a lot out of them. I think they can play the waiting game and wait till the trade deadline to actually move Gallinari. Look, 20 points per game and shot over 43% from deep. Yeah. Like, that's really impressive. I feel like that's kind of a little bit under the radar, maybe because he played for the other L.A. team, and Lou and Montrez got all the hype because those were the, the six men, but he was really good for them. Yeah, I think the biggest question mark that's always come with Gallo is his health, so he has to make sure that is that that's – you know, taken care of before the Thunder really give him up and get something good back for him. This is the trade package that I actually really like. Kent Bazemore, a first and a second round pick from Portland in exchange for Gallinari. I like it. We've often done Kevin Love trades. We're not going to do a Kevin Love trade this time around just because, hey, we've done so many Love. We wanted to mix it up a little bit this time. And Gallinari, look, for the Thunder, you bring back Bazemore just to make the money work, whatever. He's not a long-term piece. But that first round pick is the key thing, even if it is going to be like in the late 20s. Yeah, I mean, look. Just stockpile as many picks as you can if you're exactly. the Thunder at this point to, to eventually hopefully pair up with Shea Gildas Alexander. I think Gallinari warrants that at least, and they're dumping off Kent Bazemore, who's really just not much of an asset for Portland this next year anyway. 
I, I like what they'd be getting there. So we'll keep Chris Paul in, in, in the lineup for this version, but you could adjust it and do like SGA and Roberson or Bazemore if you want. If you end up dealing away CP3. It definitely leaves you bad at the, at the four position, but who cares? If you're the Thunder and you traded away Gallinari, you are tanking. Yeah, absolutely. This whole season should be lose games, get a high pick, develop Shea Gilgis Alexander, and see if Steven Adams can be continue to be a long-term uh, piece at the center position. The Blazers, meanwhile, I like this squad. This is a scary lineup in the Western Conference. They already made it to the Western Conference Finals. Mm. You had Gallinari at nearly 20 points per game, who obviously he wouldn't score that in Portland, mm. but he could still get close to it. I think that's a lot of fun. You still have Mario coming off with some extra shooting, even though you did deal away Kent Bazemore. But it, in reality, you've, you've almost flipped Evan Turner for Gallinari for a first. That's a win to me. That's a huge deal. So we mentioned the two Thunder trades. They were not going to do any more. But what should they do this year? Type T for tank or C for compete? You got to tank. It's Embrace it. Full tank mode. Don't look. They, could they win some games with CP3 and Gallinari and Steven Adams? Sure. What's their ceiling? Like a 10 seed, right? Right. They could do that. That's the worst place to be in the Western Conference. Exactly. Tank it out. Get a high pick. All the T's coming in here from Tyler, Jay, Jack. That's not a huge surprise there. Pebbles does say C. Only C along with Zach Jones I've seen so far. But next up here, Andre Iguodala. He, he's going to get moved. I mean, yeah, it's just bound stay. to happen, but who knows when. I mean, he doesn't want to be in Memphis because they're not competing for anything. He's near the end of his career, and Memphis doesn't want that contract on their hands. $17.2 million is ridiculous for Andre Iguodala. It's very expensive, and that is a factor, but Iggy still provides nice bench play, good defense, and the always important veteran leadership. Yeah, I think the defense and the leadership are the two biggest things for Iguodala, and experience in the playoffs is going to be huge with Iggy. Look, if he's open... He can make a corner three-pointer, maybe sometimes per, or a wing three-pointer as well, but the numbers don't warrant $17 million per year. So there was the report that these four teams had interest in Algodal. I've seen teams like the Pacers and Wolves in, in the comments as well. The biggest problem here, though, especially now that Houston has completed their trade, they can't do the 125% rule. They have to send out close to equal money. Right. That's tough for Denver, Houston, and L.A. It, however, isn't that difficult for the Dallas Mavericks. So here's the trade package, Jimmy. Yeah, look, they, they originally apparently already offered second round pick and Courtney Lee for Andre Iguodala. Memphis said no, but I don't know how long Memphis is going to be willing, to, and I don't know who's going to offer a better package at this Who, point. I th Memphis wants a first. I don't know what team can offer the right you know, type of contracts that the team doesn't want and a first round pick. I, I suppose Portland could, but do they really want that? I, I, I don't know. So... I like this for Dallas. I think it makes sense for Memphis. You get a, a guy on an expiring deal along with a second round pick that, you know, who knows how good it's going to be. Uh, again, Memphis is going to really be searching for trade options better than that. Yeah, so it still gets Memphis less money to spend on Courtney Lee plus the cash constrictions up to $5 million there. And they get a draft pick back, which is that's their asset acquisition. All of a sudden, they've turned literally nothing into a first and a second rounder. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, if they kept Iguodala on for the year, mm. they have to play him at some point. Who do you want him taking minutes away from? You don't want him taking minutes away from Crowder no. or Kyle Anderson, not even Grayson Allen because you, you hope he can develop something. Yeah, so I think they got to ship out Iguodala as soon as possible. The Mavs, meanwhile, Jimmy, will throw Iggy into that starting lineup. That's a pretty good defensive squad, actually. Yeah, DeLon Wright and Andre Iguodala, it's two really good defenders. Porzingis, a good rim protector. And then the bench gets another little boost because you can put Hardaway there. They love Justin Jackson. You can bring him off the bench. I like that starting five in Dallas. Today's show is brought to you guys by MyBookie. Head over to chatsports.com slash NBA now. Use that promo code CHATNBA for a 100% deposit bonus. What that means is you put down 50 bucks, and they're going to give you 50 for free. That is chatsports.com slash NBA now. Don't forget that promo code CHATNBA. Perfect just in time for, I guess, not summer league anymore, but uh, preseason basketball. Yeah. Or just MLB and NFL and regular NBA basketball. Yeah, while we all sit around and wait for the NBA to come back. Yeah, it'll, it's feel like it's going to take way too long there. All right, next up, Bradley Beal with the Wizards. Everyone wants to trade for him. The Wizards do not want to. But if Beal doesn't take that extension, they might have to alter their plans there. Yeah, look, getting equal value back for Bradley Beal is going to be very tough for the Washington Wizards. Especially because you want to keep him around for a long time. I, I don't know if Bradley Beal is going to actually accept that or not, but it wouldn't shock me if he wanted to leave because 
they have nothing in, in Washington right now. The Wizards understand that Beal is by far their best piece for their present and for their future. Yeah. The question is, can they get more for their future by trading him away? Look, 25 points per game. You say, oh, 35% is not that high. Don't forget. It was actually on a pretty high volume there. There's nobody else on the Wizards taking shots away from Beal. So, yeah, his percentage dips because of the amount of shots he's taking. Uh, Arthur says CP3 for Beal, but the Wizards blocked the Thunder's number if that trade's ever offered. There have been three teams for a, for a Washington Post report that have interest and have been linked to them. Denver, Miami, Minnesota, but Denver, Jimmy, makes the most sense. This is my favorite trade package we have. So I, I think it's a win-win for both sides. I, I totally agree with you for sure. I love Gary Harris. Michael Porter Jr. can be really special. Vanderbilt's another young piece. And then you get a first-rounder, and who knows what that first-rounder is going to be by 2022. Mm -hmm. The Nuggets get Bradley Beal. All of a sudden, they're right back in that 1-2 seed in the Western Conference. I like what you're throwing together here, Tom. Gary Harris is only 24 years old, so he slots in immediately as your shooting guard. You see what happens with Michael Porter Jr. You have Rui Hachimura. It's better than what they were in terms of looking ahead to the long term. Three promising young players. You're still probably not going to win that many games. That's okay. Yeah. Embrace uh, the tank. Embrace the tank. Go get a point guard in this next draft, and then I think you're set for the future for a little and while. And figure out long term what, what to do with uh, with John Wall's contract. You probably it, just keep it for now. Exactly. you got to figure out what you're going to do with that for sure. The Nuggets, meanwhile, they throw out this lineup. Jamal Murray, Bradley Bill, Beal, Barton, the Joker, and Paul Millsap, plus some decent enough bench options. They're not the best bench, but maybe you go sign Kyle Korver too. Uh, oh, yeah, I yeah, like that. Yeah, now we're talking. But, I mean, look, Monty Morris put on – a really good display last year in three-point shooting. Malik Beasley turned out to be okay. He wasn't quite exactly what they wanted. And Jeremy Grant, they just picked up for just a first-rounder that's probably going to be in the late 20s. This is a great Denver team that I think could be a second or third seed in the West. That's fair. Now, Denver has some great conspiracy theories around their airport. So, speaking of conspiracy theories, are aliens real? Type Y for yes and for no. Also, let us know if you're going to the Area 51 storming in, in September. <laughs> I am Are going, they real? Yes or no? No, they're not real. There are no aliens out there. If there were, we would know about them. We don't know. There's no aliens, Tom. LeVar Ball says yes. LeVar Ball's never been wrong in his life. Just saying that. Well, everybody else says yes as well, so I guess I'm the only smart one here on Chat Sports. Oh, you poor, poor, sweet summer child. <laughs> Bury your head in the sand all you want. The answer is yes. Of course they are. They're absolutely real. I have no doubts about that. Chris accuses you of being an alien. That's a good point, Chris. Because what else would an alien say? Tom, he'd shut he'd up. say no. Shut up, Tom. Are, are you like Sammy Shh. Watkins and think you're a l l lizard person too? I think we need to move on to the uh, to the next to the next player. All right, here. fine. To distract as, as 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 much as you want there. You're you're not gonna go to the 51 rated <laughs> loser. D'Angelo <laughs> Russell. Now, this one might be the biggest stretch of the group, so I don't know. Deal with it. Um, but his long-term fit with the Warriors is pretty awkward. It's extremely Because when awkward. Clay comes back, how do you play them all together? I don't think you do. I think you make D'Angelo Russell like a six man at that point. Which, I literally don't know what you do. Is he yeah. going to love that? No. Do you want to pay a six man a max contract? Absolutely not. So, look, I think he gets moved eventually. If not this season, maybe it's in the summer. Um, I, I just don't I, I don't know, man. I, it's it's going to be super weird to watch. It's weird. And a midseason trade, which can only happen starting December 15th, which could be or maybe around the time Clay gets close to being back, it's tricky because you're not just going to salary dump him. Like, that right. doesn't make any sense, but you need to get assets back if you're the Warriors because you still want to compete and win. Tricky to find a trade. I apologize if Golden doesn't think they're getting enough back. Here was my offer. Robert Covington, who I think would be a great fit in Golden State. Incredible. Gorgie Jane just because the money has to work out there. D'Angelo Russell and then Amari Spellman also just to make the money balance because the Warriors are hard capped, blah, blah, blah. And a first-round pick for Minnesota, which would be the highest first-round pick Golden State's had in quite some time. I, I like it. Uh, I think this makes more sense than a lot of different deals. I don't really know what else Washington or Minnesota would be able to give up mm -hmm. to get D'Angelo Russell. I like Covington a lot. Like you said, I think he is a great piece for that team. Him and Draymond Green in the same you know, kind of front court, I guess, is a lot of fun. And when you want to go with a small ball lineup of Covington, Draymond, Curry, Clay, and pick a shooter, yeah. that's, that's a squad right there. Yeah, I like it a lot. I like it better than – I think Covington's fit just makes a lot more sense than D'Angelo Russell's fit, even though he's obviously not as good of a player. We know Minnesota wants D'Angelo Russell. Here's what their lineup kind of looks like. It's weird at the four. It's super awkward. Noah Vonley, Jordan 
Bell, you go out and trade for somebody else. You have Jeff Teague as your bench point guard. I don't love it, but I wanted to find a way to do a D'Angelo Russell trade package since everyone keeps asking about it. I think what I would do if I were Minnesota, mm -hmm. you trade for D'Angelo Russell at the trade deadline. If, if this is the trade they can pull off, you trade for D'Angelo Russell at the trade deadline. You tank out the rest of the season, and you try to draft a, a power forward to fit next to Carl Anthony Towns. Do do you have protections then on on that on that first round pick, and does Golden State still accept it? Because that's that's the issue there. Because remember, Minnesota should is sent that first, or is it a 2020 first round? I oh. had planned to do it this upcoming year, but I, I mean, you can even make it a, a 2021 first. 21. Oh. Unprotected 2021 first. There. The, the, does that change your your mindset? Yeah, I could never be an NBA GM. I can't. I can't deal with okay. all this. There's too many big decisions to be all right, made. Well, those are some of our trade packages, guys. So send us yours. Put it in the comments section, especially on, in the non-live version of this video. Send us your trade packages and ideas. If there are enough good ones, maybe we'll do a special show dedicated Ooh. just to your ideas.